Ashley Mayu and Mike Beer here with the Sunday DRF race of the day. It's the grade two Beaumont out at Keeneland, which their meet kicks off on Friday. This goes as race number eight on their nine race program, seven furlongs on the main track for three-year-old fillies. And uh, we'll take a look at this field. We already did our research. Harbor Springs, Mike, had scratched out of a race this Friday at Keeneland, opting for this spot, but a field of six overall. What a confidence there for, for the two to, to scratch out of that allowance race to run here. This is not an easy spot, but um, she looks pretty good after two starts. They they all had the six to beat here. Returning from a layoff, you almost had me. Three-year-old debut. She was she was awful good last year. Very, very good. She ended her two-year-old season with a win in the Fern Creek at Churchill. You mentioned even money on the morning line. I think the other big name, probably Denim and Pearls, who's the runner-up to Band of Gold in the Martha Washington back in February. So we'll take a look here at the time form, pace projections for this race. And uh, Tipsy Tammy, this is a horse that's shown speed in the past, especially in those first two outings at fairgrounds. Wonder if this one will be forward again. Actually had some troubles last time out out of the gate. Yeah, she did. She got caught behind horses in that race. I suspect they'll use her speed here um, and see what happens. The two uh, Brad Cox horses, the one and the six, Neither one of them are slow. I, I realize that Dunman Pearls is cutting back for this race, but she's got enough speed to be forward from the rail if they want. And you almost had me. She's just really handy. I expect her to be forward in this race. And just as a reminder, with these uh, DRF race of the day, don't forget free past performances on the website. So we'll kick it off here with the number one, Denim and Pearls. We'll actually take a look at her runner-up finish in the Martha Washington. And, uh, you know, this is a good performance. I think there's a little bit of a concern I have, Mike, is that she kind of makes that move and she may almost makes it a little too soon. She's been kind of flat in those final stages, but she's just going to be second best behind Band of Gold. I agree. I kind of feel like she did the same thing in each of those last two starts. The two two turn races at Oakland maybe went a little too soon and they just didn't have anything left in the late stages either time. She's going to gut out second in that one, which I, I think is fine. The two races around one turn, though, I, I don't know about you. I think they're both really good. The one turn mile at Keeneland, the second start, she was much the best that day. And I know she only won by a small margin and slow time when she broke her maiden over this track. She's all the hard work in that race and, and was way better than it looks on paper. Absolutely. And I just think the seven ace distance, they're making this move for a reason. Brad Cox probably wants to get her back around one turn. And, and why not? I mean, not that her last two have not been good, but she just might be stronger. And this is where you start to make those decisions. Are you chasing maybe Kentucky Oaks or are you just going to try to have a really successful three-year-old season? So uh, we'll see what she's able to do. The two Harbor Springs, as we mentioned, was entered for a race on Friday at Keeneland, but opted for this spot in I have to say, you know, I actually spoke to Greg Foley before this race and he seemed pretty high on her, but the way she performed, I mean, she was a very, very easy winner. Yeah, she really was. And she was a really winner too. A after sort of reacting to kickback early in that race too, on that sloppy track where she lost position around the turn, but then once she got in the clear, she came with a really big run, debuted in a super live race at the fairgrounds. Those one, two finishers of that race are both really good. Um, and this really more than held her own that day. I mean, She's going to have to take a step forward here. It's not an easy spot for her, but um, listen, she's catching the, the the favorite off of a layoff in this spot, going seven furlongs. This horse has a chance to be there at the end. You mentioned uh, that also around Ortiz Jr. booked to be the uh, the pilot this weekend. I think the other thing is, man, look at her drill. Her, her works have never been that flashy. They've been decent, but really, really strong work coming into this at Churchill, 46 and one, breezing for that distance. Now we talked about the three tipsy Tammy had some troubles last time out prior to that, was able to graduate in the second career start. To me, it's just, it, it's tough to really know what she's capable of doing. We saw that she was forward when she was able to break her maiden. Then last time out had troubles. And I think she still ran okay, but um, we'll still need to take a step forward against this group. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, she did have a little bit of an excuse last time to sort of cop behind horses early. And that the horse that won that race did sort of break that race open around the turn. I kind of wanted to see her run a little better, but uh, maybe I'm being a little too hard on her. The race two back. It's got to give her some kind of a chance in this race. It's just, it's a way tougher field here. And she's one of the horses who's just not a great price on the morning line. I mean, I don't, maybe she won't be three to one, but I would never bet her at that price. No, absolutely not. I know she has that 89 buyer speed figure, which certainly catches your eyes too back, but three to one seems short, especially when we're looking at denim and pearls and the morning line favorite on the outside. Now the number four, Chi Chi, we'll take a look at one of her performances. We're actually going to go two starts back to that February 3rd effort at Gulfstream Park in the grade three forward gal. I think she kind of just plods along here and gets a piece here. And maybe that's what we'll see from her at the seven ace distance once again. But I think all in all, it flatters her. The top two horses in here, they're certainly nice. Yeah, certainly was in a good, I think this field's tougher than, than the one that we're watching right now. Uh, I mean, she just does her best. It never looks like she's going to win. 
but she hangs on for a piece of it. She's just, you know, one of those horses, and she is going to be a great price in here if you like her. But she's going to, if everybody shows up in this race, she's going to have to take a pretty big step forward. The five I contest, this one for the Todd Edie Barn, this one blinkers on. I don't know what to make of this horse. I'll just be blunt. You know, has some really nice performances down at Presque Isle and Turf Wave Park, but we're talking about a different ball game. Not only is this horse cutting back in distance, going to a one turn distance, but it's getting on the dirt for her first time against really nice fillies. Yeah, just he's just gonna have to be way better on dirt than she is on the all weather. She's okay on the all weather, but the stakes tries, the two stakes tries, they did not work out. Uh, maybe cutting back in distance does the trick. She's just gonna have to be a way better dirt horse. Then we'll round it out here with the number six. You almost had me. Another one trained by Brad Cox, who also sends out denim and pearls. Was able to win the Fern Creek and look at the Myrtle Wood that was locally at Keeneland. She's two for two there. Very impressive victories when she's been there, and she's really made things look simple. Yeah, really, really has. Um, th this uh, stakes win here is just, she She just blasts this field. A good trip in this race, but it's just a really impressive win in fast time. And it's also over this track, which is notable. Um, her Fern Creek was an even better performance. Didn't get a great trip in that race. The horse that she ran down, Helena's Forte, I mean, she'd be a handful in this race and had the jump on you almost had me in there. And this horse still came and got her. That was a, a really good performance. Um, you do have to concern yourself, though, I guess, right? About four, four plus months uh, on the bench, coming back seven furlongs. So she's going to have to be fit against a good field, but she's the horse to beat. And maybe if you want to knock her a little bit, her one try at the seven ace distance was off a layoff and she wasn't quite good enough. You know, she ended up finishing third in there, but she wasn't beaten by much. She went off as the favorite. Then she came back in the Pocahontas at Churchill, which we know the one turn mile and just second best behind a VV's dream who has been sort of highly regarded uh, kind of along the way this season. So we'll see. She's even money, as we mentioned. So don't forget to click and subscribe here for Daily Racing Forum for all the content that we have. But top pick time. Did you get creative in here? Did you go against the morning line favorite? The answer is no. No, no I didn't do it. I couldn't. If that Fern Creek wasn't on there, I probably would have. Uh, but just the way that she won that race and ran down a really good horse, it convinced me to just take her on top. And you know, I, I suspect Brad Cox is going to have her ready off the layoff here. And I, I like that she's drawn towards the outside too. And I think we have a similar uh, thought process here with our top three, which is identical, right? You all almost had me look like the horse to beat Denim and Pearls, a horse that probably benefits from the cutback and returning to a one turn distance. And the sneaky horse that you have to kind of watch and see is the two Harbor Springs, which hopefully will offer some value at six to one on the morning line. But don't forget, this is the Sunday race of the day. The grade two Beaumont goes as race number eight this Sunday out at Keeneland. Good luck.